this video lesson we'll look at hypertension, which is the scientific name for high blood pressure. We first need to understand what blood pressure is. Blood pressure is the force applied by your blood on your artery walls as your heart pumps blood around your body. Blood pressure naturally fluctuates all the time throughout the day, depending on what activity you're doing at the time and how you're feeling emotionally. High blood pressure is when your blood pressure is persistently higher than normal. Hypertension occurs when the pressure of blood inside arteries is higher than it should be, and this can lead to stroke, heart attack, or kidney disease. In Australia, one in six adults lives with hypertension. It has no early warning symptoms, and therefore many people are not aware they are affected. Normal blood pressure, as shown in the images, is defined as 120 over 80. What this means is that the top reading 120 is the systolic pressure, or when the heart is pumping blood. The bottom reading, 80, is the diastolic pressure, when the heart is at rest. High blood pressure is defined as when the diastolic reading, or when the heart is at rest, is greater than 90. This can be seen in this blood pressure chart, with systolic blood pressure going up the left-hand vertical axis, and the diastolic blood pressure going along the horizontal axis. As diastolic blood pressure defines hypertension, this is the most important reading to look at. Optimal blood pressure is seen as the intersection between 120 on the vertical axis and 80 on the horizontal axis. And you can see that as we increase the diastolic blood pressure, we move from uh, normal blood pressure to mild hypertension, moderate and finally severe. Let's look now at the risk factors. First of all, we'll look at those that you can't change. For example, age. As you get older, your risk of hypertension increases. If you're a male, you're already at a higher risk of hypertension based on your gender. Ethnic background can have some effect as people of some origins, such as people from the Indian subcontinent, have a higher risk. And in Australia, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have an increased risk which is related to lifestyle factors. Family history also plays a part and if a member of your family has had heart disease you may be at a greater risk of hypertension. There are of course many risk factors that you do have control over. Regarding hypertension, salt intake is very important as high sodium levels can increase blood pressure. Obesity, puts extra pressure on the heart and arteries due to excess body fat, as well as the increased blood volume that has to be pumped around the body. Smoking raises blood pressure and also hardens artery walls and uh, leads to inflammation. A diet high in saturated fat can also increase blood pressure by narrowing artery walls. This occurs as cholesterol is deposited in the walls of the arteries. Additionally, an alcohol consumption of more than three glasses per day can increase blood pressure. The chart to the top right of the screen shows that those who consume alcohol on a daily basis have a significantly higher risk of developing hypertension. This is shown in red compared to those who have normal blood pressure, which is shown in blue. It's also shown that those who never drink alcohol in the very left-hand category have a much better chance of having normal blood pressure, as do those who only drink sporadically or on rare occasions. Physical inactivity is another risk factor that you have control over. Exercise keeps artery walls elastic and helps to strengthen the muscles of the heart, which all assist in keeping blood pressure at a normal level. It's also been shown that people who have high blood pressure tend to consume less calcium than those who have normal blood pressure and therefore it's assumed that there may be some effect of calcium on keeping blood pressure at a normal level. Having understood these risk factors, we can then decide to make some diet and lifestyle modifications to improve our chances of having normal blood pressure. This includes limiting salt intake to less than the uh, upper limit of 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, 
limiting fat to less than 30% of total daily kilojoule intake, and in particular saturated fat to less than 6% of total daily energy intake. This is less than the usual recommendation of less than 10%. Cholesterol intake should be limited to less than 150 milligrams per day, protein to less than 18% of total daily energy intake, and alcohol to less than two standard drinks per day, which is the usual recommendation. In particular, as shown in the image here, there are some foods which should always be avoided for people at risk of high blood pressure. These include pickled foods, so high in, in salt, many types of processed and fried foods as well because of their combination of salt and saturated and trans fats. A study conducted a few years ago was called the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension or DASH Diet Study. The study promotes a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, low fat dairy products, whole grain foods, fish, lean poultry, beans, seeds and nuts, and low in sweets, added sugars, sugar containing beverages, fats, red meats and salt. People following this diet were shown to be able to reduce their systolic and diastolic blood pressure by 5.5 and 3.0 respectively compared to those who participated in the control side of the study. There is no requirement that you memorize the DASH diet and you can see that there's significant overlap between the DASH diet and the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating in terms of the recommendation to maintain a diet high in fruits, vegetables, whole grain foods, etc. Finally, those at risk of hypertension can choose to make some lifestyle modifications to reduce the severity or risk of the disease. In general, you should aim to reduce weight, limit alcohol consumption, stop smoking if you're a smoker, reduce stress, and exercise more frequently. All of these will help to reduce the risk of hypertension as well as many other lifestyle diseases.